Let's introduce some testing tools in this video that are provided by Django REST Framework. Now, I actually did a series recently on testing in Django, and that was for the Net Ninja YouTube channel. I'll leave a link to that series just below the video, and it's worth checking out if you want to learn more about testing all of the different components in Django applications. Now, we didn't cover Django REST Framework in that series, so this video is going to highlight testing in an API application that uses REST Framework. Now, before we dive into that, if you want to support the channel, check out our Coffee page. And thanks very much to everybody who's contributed to this page, it's greatly appreciated. And don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Now as it says here, REST Framework includes a few helper classes that extend Django's existing test framework, and they improve the support for making API requests and for integration with Django REST Framework. Now here's an example, the API request factory that extends the request factory class that Django provides. And it's almost identical in terms of its API to the request factory. So all of the typical methods for making a request, such as get and post and so on, they are all available in the API request factory as well. And here's an example just below here. We instantiate an API request factory object, and then we use that factory, for example, to send post requests to a given endpoint. And we can send dictionaries of data, and we can specify the content type, for example, to be application slash JSON. So the API request factory helps you make requests. We also have the API client, and that extends Django's native client class, and that is used for making requests. And if we go down to this, the API client class supports the same request interface as Django's client class. And again, that means get, post, and so on, they're all available. And this API client is used in the API test case classes. So REST Framework provides the following test case classes, and they mirror the existing Django classes again. The only difference is, instead of the client being available on each of these objects, we have the API client instance, which works better with the REST Framework request and response objects. So if you're familiar, for example, Django provides a test case class, and you can write your tests within those classes, but what the difference is here is that Django REST Framework will give you this API test case, and self.client on that is going to refer to an API client object. Now let's get started with a practical example. I'm going to open up VS Code, and I'm in the tests.py file, and I've removed any existing code except for these imports. So from django.urls, we're going to import the reverse function, and we're also importing the user and product models, and we're going to write a test for one of the views that we have in this Django REST Framework application. So let's go to views.py, and I'm going to scroll down here to this one here. It's called Product Detail API View. Now, originally, I think this was a detail view, but as you can see, it's inheriting from this generic class called Retrieve Update Destroy API View. And that means it accepts a GET request to get an individual detail object, but it also accepts Update and Destroy API requests, and these correspond to PUT requests and DELETE requests. We're going to test this functionality alongside the get permissions method that we have here. And if we look at that method and refresh our memory, this is going to require that an admin user would be the one that sends a put, a patch, or a delete request. But for the other request, which of course is a get request to retrieve an individual object, that is allowed by anybody. Now, when you have these kind of permissions, you definitely want to write tests to make sure things work as expected. So that's what we're going to do in this video. And we're going to use the API test case. So let's import that. It's this one here. So we can grab the import from the documentation and let's bring that into tests.py. Right at the top there, we're importing the API test case. And we can start writing the tests now. So let's create one called product API test case. And that's going to inherit from that API test case from Django REST Framework's test module. Now, what I want to do to start with is write some setup code here. And because this is a method, it's going to take self as a parameter. If you're not familiar with the setup method, this allows you to define common setup code that's going to run before each test case within this particular class. So I'm going to write one line of code at a time here. What we're going to do to start with is create an admin user. So we're going to use user.objects.create super user. And let's just give generic details here for the username and password. And the reason for this is because we're going to test this functionality here when we send a put and a delete request only admin users should be allowed to do that. And we're also going to create a normal user. So let's go to the line below here. And we're going to create a normal user that's not going to use the create super user method on the user manager. But instead, it's going to use the create user method. And that's going to create a normal user that doesn't have the staff property set to true. Now, once we've done that, we're going to have an admin user and a normal user available in each test method that we're going to write in a second. We also want a product that we can use. So I'm going to create a product here. And notice we're storing all of these on the class so we can reference them from the methods. 
And this is very simple, it just uses product.objects.create in order to create a product with these details. And we're finally going to refer to the URL that we want to actually send the request to to test this functionality. So let's create a variable called self.url. And I want to use the reverse function here to get a named URL. Now, if we go to urls.py, this is the view that we're testing here. Notice that this is the path that we have. We can define a third parameter to the path function, and that allows us to define a named URL. Now, this is important because if we want to refer to a URL using the reverse function, we need it to be a named URL. So let's give this one the name of product detail. And this URL takes an integer as a path parameter. So for example, if we want to look up product number one in the database, it's going to be slash products slash one. So let's save urls.py and go back to our tests.py file. The first parameter here to Django's reverse function is going to be the name of the URL. So that was product detail. And then we need to pass some keyword arguments here. So we define a dictionary. And I think the name of the key here is product ID. Now let's go back to urls.py. You can see it here. This is the name of this particular path parameter, product ID. So we're going to refer to that. And what we need to pass in here is the product ID. So self.product.pk. This product here is the one that we created on the line above. So this is the URL where we send the get request to retrieve the individual object by that ID. And also the put request to update and the delete request to delete that object. Now I want to emphasize just before we move on, this is one of the benefits of using named URLs. You can refer to them in your tests using the reverse function as well as in other parts of your Django applications. So giving URLs a name is a good practice in a Django application. So now that the setup method is written, we can actually start writing the test methods. And again, all of this code in the setup will run before each one of those test methods. If you want to know more about that, check out the NetNinja course. So let's write the first function and I'm going to give it the name test get product. This is for getting an individual product from the database. Now we're going to use self.client and remember self.client when we have an API test case class, that's going to be the API client from Django REST framework. So we're going to refer to that. And because we're getting a product, we're going to send a get request. So we use the get method on the client and we're going to send that to self.url and that's going to refer to this one here. Now, when we send a get request with this ID, we expect to get back a response containing the JSON data for that product. So let's do some assertions here. So using self.assert equal, we're going to assert that the response.status code is equal to 200. And that's because any user should be able to send a get request and get back a product. Because if we go back to views.py, a get request is not in one of these methods here. So it's going to have the permission class of allow any. So we're testing that functionality here. A user can send a get request to get an individual product and we're not performing any kind of authentication here. And we can also perform a second assertion here. So we're going to extract some data from the response. We can get the data using the response.data property and that's something that comes from the REST framework response object. And we can key into that and get, for example, the name field. And we can make sure that that's equal to self.product.name. So let's explain this a little bit. Let's go back to views.py. We're using the product serializer here. And if we go to serializers.py and look at the product serializer, the name is part of the data that's going to be returned in that response. So what we're doing in the test is we're making sure that we're getting back the right object. So response.data refers to that data that's being returned as part of the response for this product. We get the name from that and make sure that it's equal to the product name that we set up here in this method above. So let's just save this and we're going to test it out by going to the terminal here and running python manage.py test. That's the command to run the test suite in Django. And I'm getting an error here. I need to start the Redis instance for this particular application. So I'm going to do that just now. So I've started that now, as you can see here, and let's try this again, running python manage.py test. You can see it's discovered a test and it runs that test and everything is okay. It's passing as expected. So if you're familiar with Django testing, this is very similar. It just uses a subclass of the API test case instead. And that means that self.client refers to that API client object and it gives you back a Django REST framework response object and you have access to the .data property because of that. So anybody can send a get request, but that's not the case for put and delete requests. So we're going to make sure that unauthenticated users cannot update a product. So let's write a test for that. Let's go back to tests.py and we're going to create a function here called test unauthorized update product. Now let's create some data here. I'm just going to create a dictionary with a single key of name. 
we would actually create a dictionary that has the structure the serializer expects here, but it doesn't really matter. We just want to test that we can't send a put request. And then we'll get a response object here and we're going to use self.client and this time the dot put method. Again, that request is going to the same URL and this time we're going to attach the data here. Now what we want to do here is use the self.assert equal method. And again, we're going to check response.status code. And we want to check that that status is equal to 401, which stands for unauthorized. And that's because a user is not logged in. So when you send that request, it's not an authorized request. And that's the response code that you can expect for that. So let's clear the terminal and run python manage.py test. You can see it's found two tests now and it's run both of them and they both passed. One thing I want to do is stop referring to these magic numbers. These are HTTP response status codes and there's a better way to refer to these. So let's go to the top and from REST framework here, let's import status. And if we hover over that, you can see this provides some descriptive HTTP status codes for code readability. So let's go back down here and instead of putting the number 200, we're going to refer to status. And if we look here, we've got HTTP 200 OK. And for 401, we can again refer to the status and I'm going to look for HTTP underscore 401 and that's the unauthorized response. Let's just double check everything is working by rerunning manage.py test. Again, it's found two tests and you can see hopefully in a second that they're both going to pass. Now I'm going to copy this method here. It's going to be largely the same to test an unauthorized delete request. So let's paste that to the line below and I'm going to update the name of the method to unauthorized delete product. And we don't need to send any data because a delete request should not send any data. It's just telling the server basically to delete the entity from the database. And we can send a delete request using the self.client.delete method. Everything else should be the same. The status code for that response should be 401 unauthorized. And that's because this view here in the get permissions method, we're checking for delete requests. If it's a delete request, we're going to update the permission class to the is admin user permission. Check out the previous video when we did this if you want to know more about that. But let's now go back to tests.py and make sure we've saved that. And again, let's clear the terminal and rerun manage.py test. This time it's found three tests and you're going to see that all of them are going to pass, as you can see at the bottom. So this is all good, but we can now test some different things now that we've got this basic structure set up. We know that unauthorized or unauthenticated users cannot send the put request and the delete request, but we now want to test this with an admin user that should be able to delete an object and a normal user that is authenticated, but not an administrator. They should not be able to delete an object because this is the permission that we're using here. It's the is admin user permission. Now REST framework does provide an is authenticated permission and that's for any user that is logged into the application. But is admin user is a bit more restrictive. It's only going to be admins that can actually perform these actions. So we need to test that out. Let's go back to tests.py. And what I'm going to do at the bottom is create a new method called test only admins can delete product. So this is going to be specifically for the delete request. And we're going to have two parts to this method. Firstly, we're going to test that normal users cannot delete. And note that you could do this in its own method and you could do the second part in a second method. And the second part here, if I go to just below here, is that we're going to test that the admin user can delete. So there's two parts to this method. Let's start at the top. What we're going to do is use the self.client.login method. This is another method on the Django test client and also on the API client by REST framework. And let's grab the details here for logging in for the normal user. So we're going to copy this username and password and we're going to paste that into the login method. Now, once we've logged in with this normal user, we can get a response by calling self.client.delete and we're going to refer to self.url. So again, we're going to try and delete that product from the database and we get back the response here. We're then going to create a couple of assertions. So let's start with assert equal and we want to check that response.status code is equal to another status here and it's going to be HTTP underscore 403 forbidden. So we're returning a 403 forbidden rather than a 401 unauthorized. So to differentiate those, the 401 refers to an authentication problem. For example, in the above methods, the user is not logged in at all. But the 403 forbidden, that is an authorization or permission issue. So the user is logged in, but they don't have the authorization to get this particular resource with this particular method. So a slight differentiation between 401 and 403. And because we've logged in using self.client.login, we're going to use 403 forbidden here. That's the expected response status code. We're also going to have another assertion here, and I'm going to use the assert true method. 
And I want to use the product model here and we're going to construct an ORM statement. So product.objects.filter. And let's filter down to the product that has the same primary key as self.product that we created in the setup method. And we're going to check that this product exists by using that method in the ORM. So product.objects.filter and we get the product that has that given primary key and dot exists is going to return true or false depending on whether any objects are found in the database. Of course, because this is a primary key, we could also use dot get here and we can forget about exists if we do that, but this is just a different way to do it. We expect the product to exist because the delete request should fail. Therefore, the product itself should not be deleted on the back end, and this should evaluate to true, which is what we're expecting here in this assertion. So before we go any further, let's run the test command in the terminal. This time we found four tests and we're expecting all of these to pass. And you can see at the bottom, all four have passed, so that's fine. We're going to now move on to the second part of this method. That's testing that an admin user can delete the product. So I'm going to copy a lot of this code here. Let's do that and bring it down to just below here. And let's start by changing the login details for the user. So this time we want to log in using the super user details. So let's copy this and go back down to the method. And we're going to paste these in here. So this time we're logging in as an administrator. And if we go back to the get permissions method, an admin user is, or rather that's the permission that's used in this get permissions method when we send a delete request. So we're going to expect a different response code. So let's go back here and we're going to change the self.assert equal here. Rather than a 403 forbidden, we're going to expect an HTTP 204 no content response. So when you successfully delete an entity using a delete request, the server will typically return a 204 no content response. And that indicates that it was successful, but no content needs to be returned after that object has been removed. And then if we look at this second assertion, we're filtering down to get a product with the same primary key as the one where we've sent this delete request for. So that's not going to exist in the database. So I'm going to change this assertion to assert false. And that means that we don't expect to see any product in the database after we use the filter method and look for a product with this primary key. So let's save tests.py and let's go back to the terminal and let's rerun manage.py test one more time. Again, it's four tests. We didn't write a new method. It's just extra logic in this given method here. And when that completes, we're going to see that all tests have passed. Now, one thing I've noticed is that these tests are quite slow and you can see there's a signal being fired here that's clearing the cache. And that was defined earlier using this particular method. What we could do if we want to speed the tests up is disable the signals. And there are ways of doing that. If you're interested in videos on that topic, let me know in the comments and we'll try and add those videos later on. Now we have similar logic, not just for deleting products, but also for updating products because the put and the patch request are part of this if statement that changes the permission class. I'm going to leave the implementation of those tests as an exercise. It's going to be similar logic and I don't want to be too repetitive in this video. So I'll leave that to you if you want to try and implement those. What I'm going to do just to finish the video is go back to the REST framework documentation. So on this REST framework testing page, what we're going to do is go to near the bottom of the sidebar and there's a page on checking the response data. So when checking the validity of test responses, it's often more convenient to inspect the data that the response was created with rather than inspecting the fully rendered response. And you can do that using response.data, which is something we saw earlier in the video. So for example here, using the client to send a GET request to that URL. We can then check that response.data has the given properties or is equal to the given dictionary. So checking response.data is going to be a lot more convenient than the following way of doing it, where you actually use the json.loads method and pass in the response content into that and then check that that is equal to this dictionary. So response.data, it's a nice simple API to get that data rather than having to deserialize the response. So that's one tip I just want to highlight at the end of this video. So that's been a bit more about testing with Django REST framework. If you want to know more in general about testing with Django, then check out the series that I did for NetNinja. Again, we've got a link to that just below the video. And again, if you're finding this content useful and you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page and don't forget to subscribe if you've not already done so. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.